Chelsea are in one of the biggest predicaments the club has ever faced. So, to say the least, Chelsea have been struggling this year. Chelsea, what the hell see? After taking on new ownership in the form of Todd Boyley, Roman Abramovich has completed the sale of Chelsea Football Club. This is a long-term project. 2.5 billion pounds. After Abramovich was forced to sell the club due to sanctions, Chelsea has since seen a huge downturn in the team's performance. There has been loads of spending in the transfer market and a constant cycle of new management that has completely deteriorated the club. But for some reason, I have a feeling that Chelsea will be great again in the next four or five years. But it all just depends on a few things and I'll explain it all in this video. First, real quick, let's cover how the condition of Chelsea got so bad in just the span of a few years. Starting all the way back in March of 2022, with the ongoing situation in Ukraine getting worse, the owner at the time, Roman Abramovich, had close ties with Russia, in turn got sanctioned with all of his assets in the UK frozen, and thus he put up the club for sale. And that's where soccer fanatic Todd Boyley comes in with his company, Clearly Capital, purchasing Chelsea FC on May 7th of 2022 for around £4.25 billion. Now, a football club is just like any other business, where the ownership and therefore the leadership of the club matters a lot. If the owner has no idea what he's doing, they're destined to fail. Before Bully would ruin the club, he had a chance to sign some new players in the summer transfer window. And boy, did he splash the cash. Here is the full shopping list. Wesley Fofana for 75 million euros, Raheem Sterling for 47.5 million euros, Mark Cucurella for 60 million euros, Kelly Dukolabali for 33 million euros, and then like five other random players for another 57 million euros. In total, spending about 488 million million euros. With this buffed up squad and coming off a great season under Tuchel, a lot of people are expecting Chelsea to just ball out, but that would be far from what would really happen. The season did not start off great whatsoever, with Chelsea only winning three out of their first six matches. In all fairness, they did lose to Southampton and Leeds, and that was enough for Boyley to say, that's it. And even though Chelsea were in sixth place, and it was super early in the season, he gave Tuchel the sack. Sacking him after all he had done for the club was absolutely crazy in my mind. So then Boyley brought in Graham Potter, who had worked wonders with Brighton the season prior, and he made a good first impression, drawing his first match of the season in the UCL against RB Salzburg, which gave fans some hope, and by January, Todd Boyley decided to go on another spending spree, signing another 287 million worth of players, most notably Mikhail Mudrik and Enzo Fernandez, which I thought they paid way too much for but the fans were still optimistic. They had a team full of super signings and a pretty decent manager. How could they fail? Well, they still managed to. Potter notoriously failed for like seven months, slowly driving the team down the table. If this was Tuchel, he would have been sacked by his first loss. Potter was doing so poorly that some fans thought it was an inside job in order to sabotage Chelsea. By the time he was sacked after a loss against Villa, Chelsea were 11th place and things wouldn't get better. They had to bring in an interim manager who was poor and then Frank Lampard was signed for the rest of the season, and he just sucks in managing teams. And by the end of this disaster season, Chelsea finished 12th. Clearly, there were a few kings to work out. Firstly, the team was just too new. They hadn't played with each other enough, and there was no chemistry between the players. It was like watching my friend play FIFA with a bronze team full of red links. It was terrible. Secondly, the manager situation completely destroyed the team. There was no consistent coaching style and everything was changed around too frequently in my opinion. It was part of the reason there was no chemistry between the players. And arguably this was the biggest issue they faced. But there was also no main man, no main striker, no star player that could score a lot of goals. Like Kai Havertz is the starting striker. He's good, but he's not that good. If Chelsea just had one reliable goal scorer that season, the whole club would have been turned around. If Chelsea could fix those three big issues, there would be a huge margin of improvement, but there were some silver linings. First of all, their team is extremely young, which means a lot of potential for growth going into the future. To go more in depth, there's a handful of players I think will be super important for Chelsea in the coming years, but we'll get into that later. Overall, the 2022-23 season was a huge disaster, and things would slowly start to get pieced back together in the next term. The 2023-24 season started off well with the news Mauricio Pochettino being appointed as the new manager, and some more exciting signings in Moses Caicedo and Robert Sanchez, which brought Chelsea's transfer spending under Boyle to over a billion pounds which is super disappointing when you look at how the team's performing. Anyways, the morale of the team was obviously very poor, and the whole club was just a mess. But preseason was quite optimistic for some reason, as they went undefeated for all of their preseason games, playing some actual quality teams. And we got to see some of our world record signings actually perform, which was refreshing. And soon enough, the league was underway. It started off very poor. They drew Liverpool, lost to West Ham, and only managed to scrape wins against Luton, Fulham, and Burnley in their first 10 matches, which is so bad. And as far as the rest of the season has gone for Chelsea in the Premier League, it has not been the best. They are currently 12th at the time of recording. Honestly, a lot of fans had expected a better turnaround from Poch, but it's hard to only blame him with this truly inexperienced team. 
but on the other hand, you have to admire the growth he's made in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Beating the likes of Brighton and Newcastle to make it to the final of the Carabao Cup, where they lose to Liverpool. But besides that, the team played exceptionally well. A lot of players who I thought were just generally ass last year actually got the chance to shine and show they were pretty capable. Like Enzo Fernandez, who scored a few goals in that campaign. And Mudrik wasn't so bad either, but Conor Gallagher was exceptional. It was a promising show of what the future of Chelsea will look like. Additionally, in the FA Cup, which hasn't finished, the semis will get played in mid-April, but Poch has led Chelsea in a pretty exceptional tournament. He beat Villa 3-1, who are some pretty tough opponents, and beat Leicester 4-2. Some pretty impressive stuff given the tools he has to work with. And going into the semis against Man City, Chelsea will win, mark my words. Overall, the performances of the team have been very positive, and the team has really started to come together. Even though we are 12th right now and probably won't get much higher on the table this season, Chelsea will be great again, but I know that sounds out of this world, so let me explain how. One of the biggest problems facing Chelsea this season is lack of leadership on and off the pitch, and obviously the tactical problems, but I won't get into that in this video. Chelsea have been struggling to find a consistent captain that can play a lot of games this season, but one man who has risen to the occasion is one that I mentioned before, Connor Gallagher. Gallagher has captained 13 games in the Prem this season, and has been one of the most important players for Chelsea. Out of all the midfielders that have been really underperforming for the Blues this season, Gallagher has been a diamond in the rough, finally getting back into the form he was at when using Crystal Palace. The 24-year-old has scored two goals and five assists this season, but more importantly, he's held down the vital role in the midfield that Chelsea need, and he's become one of the best leaders at the club. He knows the game well enough to guide the young players around, and he can hold his own against the best players in the league. I personally think he is super underused this season, but unfortunately, he gets overshadowed by the likes of Caicedo and Fernandez, almost completely due to the fact that they both cost 100 million euros each. So Chelsea almost has to play them, which sucks because Gallagher is a quality player and he's on par with those two in my opinion. So if we see that Chelsea and continues to play, I think the club will benefit immensely from him. So once they fix their leadership problem and get a solid manager in, what's going to be the catalyst that makes Chelsea a great football club again? Well, as I said before, their team is extremely young and all the players they've been purchasing in the past year and a half have been long-term investments. So if it all goes to plan and the handful of players I think are going to do well grow into their expectations, what I'm saying will be true. First off, let's start with Malo Gusto. The 20-year-old moved in the summer of 2023 after struggling with injury last year in Lyon, but this season he has risen to be one of the first choice fullbacks for Chelsea, and he's one of the most exciting players to watch in this season. Even though he doesn't score a lot of goals, his dribbling and pace make watching this underwhelming Chelsea side a little bit more enjoyable. But another player who's even more exciting is Cole Palmer. He's become the face of the Chelsea team after he left City in search of first team football, and he has delivered. With 11 goals and 8 assists in all competitions this season, Cole Palmer is one of the most informed forwards in the Prem, and I think Chelsea's most important player. Completely changing the way Chelsea play, and completely changing the way the fans feel about the team. If Cole can get his output of goals and assists even higher, and continue to contribute the way he does now, there is no doubt for me that Chelsea will improve. Obviously, you can look at the plethora of other youngsters in the likes of Mudrik, Fernandez, Caicedo, Lavia, Madueke, Jackson, and realize there is so much potential for a really good squad with a lot of depth if these players continue to improve. And that's why I think Chelsea will grow into Premier League champions in the next five years or at least win a domestic cup trophy. And that wraps this video up. If you guys want to watch another one, it can be over here. You can subscribe right under it, and I'll see you guys next week.